Tite and Lebohang Diale have made it to the final 11 heading to Dubai to get funding. Thanks to the success of their live pitches in South Africa, let's take a closer look at how their pitches went. First up is Lebohang Diale of Great Smash. Welcome Lebohang. Your time starts now. Thank you so much. Church education is a globally proven approach to upskilling and enabling the journey towards a meaningful career, where the difference in income between a tertiary grad and a high school grad is between three to seven times per annum. But what does it take to achieve this within the African context? Let's take the story of Echo and what she had to go through over a seven year journey from high school all the way to her first day of work to achieve this outcome. Echo in high school, we need to get career advice at a high cost. Once she figures out what it is she can do, align to her skills and interests, she then needs to apply to various higher learning institution opportunities and funding opportunities individually as there is no centralized portal. Upon admission to Highland Institution, she then must source necessary resources like laptops, textbooks, registration deposits to enable her journey. Then she may need to borrow money from friends and family as it takes 50 days on average for a bursa to pay out. She'd repeat the cycle every single year until she graduates, where then she's expected to find a suitable job aligned to her skills, her interests, and what the market is looking for. As you can see, if one step in this journey doesn't happen correctly, her chances of success decrease drastically. And we also can see this in the outcomes of the current system, where there's only a 9.4% tertiary enrollment rate, a 55% tertiary dropout rate, a $6.3 billion funding shortfall, and saying 4% of tertiary grads find themselves underemployed or unemployed. We need a solution to the systemic issue. Bridge is that solution. It helps students achieve their career goals through a single platform. Echo through Bridge would now be able to have access to a career planner enabled by AI to support her with career guidance and application services. Additionally, she'd be able to access a data-driven marketplace to connect her to products and services that she'd need to help her succeed. And if there's a funding gap, we have a financial services to cover that particular gap for her. This is all provided as one solution, starting as early as high school, all the way to early employment. The pitch was nerve-wracking at first, especially when you're standing just before you walk onto the stage. You were just like, okay, many, many thoughts going through your mind. But once you're on the stage and you got started, it just flowed. Great pitch, love what you're doing. Um, there is a definite need, I believe, uh, in terms of what you're providing to the market in terms of what's broken, in terms of that natural fit to mm -hmm. be able to get access to, to quality education. What is the, the thinking behind that in terms of your next progression? If we're gonna raise money to solve this big issue, let's go big or go home. In terms of platforms like this, they're really important in the African context just because there's not enough uh, opportunities like this for for majority of the citizens of the continent, right? If you typically don't come from a well-to-do family who can give you, hey, here's a million dollars. Um, so we need to have different environments that are able to enable us, whether it is from university or from colleges or from just starting a small business and be able to showcase that, hey, my business is growing X, Y, and Z to the next level. We need these particular type of platforms to make it easier for us to scale and to solve the systemic issues which are out there. Next, it was Tapelo's turn to tell the judges what Botali AI is solving. Tapelo, you've got five minutes to impress our panelists. Good luck. Thank you. We offer a suite of natural language processing tools that enables organizations and companies to engage with their customers in languages that their customers understand and trust. And we do this in three ways. Firstly, we help call centers transcribe their calls in multiple languages, um, allowing them to draw rich, actionable insights that they previously had no access to. This enables them to be compliant, to improve their agent's performance, and to streamline their um, quality assurance process on the millions of calls that they do every month, regardless of the language spoken on those calls. We also have a multilingual um, help desk and vir no-code virtual assistant builder that allows organizations to engage with their customers in multiple languages using both text and speech. The help desk allows support agents to, in real time, translate uh, customer messages and give uh, customers a translated response in the customer's preferred languages. Lastly, our tools can be used via API to be integrated into other bespoke solutions. Our approach enables us to easily customize our models for our clients' specific needs and domain. 
not only that, our augmentation strategy and the end-to-end -end, um, deep learning um, models that we use allow us to onboard languages very quickly. So um, thank you very much for a um, great presentation. How is this different to Google Translate? Thank you. So uh, the, one of the biggest problem with big tech is that their approach is a one size fits all. And that doesn't work in specific industries. So in the banking, banking industry, for example, a word like transgression might not appear, but a word like transaction will appear quite often. So they, uh, their models are like one size fits all. That introduces like a lot of confusion and it lacks like specific domain um, language. So our models can be tailored for specific industries, domain, and clients. Um, I think they, they asked like some really solid um, questions, important questions to ask uh, anyone building the solution we're building. Um, and yeah, it's, it's uh, obviously like things to, to consider. Um, and a lot of those things we've obviously uh, been considering as we've been going through our journey. The impact has already started. I think, you know, just um, showcasing our, our brand and our solution to uh, quite a wide audience that, that multi-choice multi has, has been like really great um, for us, already receiving like introduction requests and so on. Um, you know, the networking side of the, the, the program is also great. Learning from entrepreneurs who are much further than we are, um, you know, about their war stories and how they overcame certain challenges and hurdles. So that's been great. The journey to Dubai continues for Lebohang and Tapelo with lots of opportunities ahead. 11 of the most promising small businesses with enormous potential on the African continent will present their business plans to prospective international investors in Dubai. Next week on the Multi-Choice Africa Accelerator, we're off to Senegal to meet Bernie, co-founder and CEO of Matontin, to find out how he's facilitating women empowerment through financial inclusion and Ivory Coast's Star News Mobile, a media company with a mission to give financial freedom to African content creators. To learn more about the 2023 Africa Accelerator program, log on to our portal on the link below. The Multi-Choice Africa Accelerator, powered by ECOWAS Bank, supported by Multi-Choice Innovation Fund.